Trey Lance is going to have all the reps in minicamp and OTA. Although we don't know how many practices that'll actually be. They cut that short last year. Anyway, he's going to have all of them. He's going to have a clear runway to take the job. Um, that being said, there's a safety net. It's called Jimmy Garoppolo. If Trey Lance doesn't really look great, they can always pivot and change because, frankly, nothing has changed. He's had some work with John Beck. They still need to see something, and mm-hmm. they're not just jumping all in. They're waiting. Uh, and it's not it's not just, like, on the field, too. He's got some work to do in the locker room. Like, you have to become the leader of this team and make people like Eric Armstead feel comfortable saying goodbye to their BFF. So how strong of a camp does Trey Lance need to have? I think he needs to show him that he can be a starter. I think that he needs to come in and build on what he what he showed last year. And if he can do that, if he can if he shows the progression that we saw from him from training camp the week five and then to week seventeen, that I think he will have he'll be able to they will feel comfortable moving forward with with Trey Lance. I think that they're really looking to see what he does during uh, OTAs and mini camp uh, to kind of dictate where they go once once uh, training camp comes around. Yeah, uh, and that's that that that's what that's what John Lynch kind of kind of mentioned, right? About you know he needs to in order for them to get where they need where they're looking to go, they need Lance to do what they. I think what he said is in order for us to do what we want, Trey needs to show big improvement or okay. something along those lines. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see. I mean, how much eleven on eleven do they do in OTAs and minicamp? Sure, it's sure. usually a lot of seven on seven stuff. It's going to be interesting. I mean, the Niners haven't really been willing to take that leap of faith. Kyle Shanahan said a lot of confident stuff today, but will they follow through or will they watch, you know, the seven or eight practices in the, in the spring program and be like, ah, we just haven't seen enough. You know, he was good on these four days, but he wasn't that great on these three days. What do we do? And, you know, unless Carolina comes through with exactly what the Niners are looking for, I, I just feel like if he is there in training camp, all of a sudden it gets weird. And I know, I think we disagree on this, but to me, roster politics play a part. And I think in, like we used to say, Lance just needs to be as good as Garoppolo for the Niners to make the switch because it's all about Lance anyway. I almost don't feel that way anymore. I feel like Lance has to really show the locker room that he's clearly better. Otherwise they're going to side with Jimmy. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. That's, that's partly why, they, I think they went the direction that they went last year because Lance didn't show enough to show that he was just better. He showed that they were even, even if they're on the same. It was debatable for sure. It, yeah, yeah. If if he can go, that's why for me it's he needs to go out there and he. That's why I don't have a problem with if they do have a competition because he needs to go out and show that he is. He needs to go out and prove that he's the guy. That it's that's kind of the same thing that, that we were talking about last year. He needs to go out there and he needs to leave no doubt that he is the better of the two quarterbacks. And if he can do that, I feel like even the the George Kittles and the Cal, you know, and the Cal Hughes checks of the world will start to believe in him a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. I just, I wonder how much he can really prove in OTAs and minicamp, not even in sure. his, not his, it's just OTAs and minicamp. It would have been nice if they had played him a little bit more last year. We kept talking about it, but like there were blowouts where they were up and now all of a sudden they're like, well, we got to get a little bit more data. Well, yeah, I agree. It would have been nice to have, and I can't help but chuckle here. Kyle be like, he's ready. He's ready for this now. It's like, dude, two months ago, he wasn't ready to take over for nine finger Jimmy. All right. Jimmy nine fingers and one shoulder. Was still, <laughs> you had more confidence in him then than, than Trey two months past. And you're like, well, yeah, I mean, I this, it's like, really? Like, I guess that that I get that that was the plan. But don't you see how I could be a little skeptical? Like, really? What made your attitude? I think you still want to see something, Kyle. I think you're I think you're I think you still need to see something, Kyle. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. There's, yeah. there could be something to it. Like, like I yeah. said, I think he, there, that's why th- th- there's, th- there's the topic because of it, because he still needs to show the, uh, the growth that, uh, that they're looking for. Yeah. It's too bad though. Cause Jimmy can throw 11 picks in camp and everyone's like, you know what? He's just working on stuff. Okay. <laughs> just, he's just learning what not to do. Trey, man, Trey, the, the bar's going to be pretty high for Trey. Oh man. The scrutiny on his off season is going to be phenomenal. You're going to have, 15 different people a day telling you exactly what his completion percentage was, <laughs> how many picks, what they look like, what the touchdowns were. Oh, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. Well, the, the, yeah. The one other thing on, on Lance before we move off of Lance is, is that when, when Kyle Shanahan was asked today about the hiring of Brian Greasy as the quarterback's coach, he did not mention anybody other than having Greasy in to work with Trey Lance. He's looking Good. forward to, 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 to him working with Lance. Good. I mean, I would think so. I would think even if things get weird this year, that Jimmy Garoppolo definitely won't be on the team next year. 
And he and because Kylie said, like, you know, sooner or later it's gonna be Trey's team. Like, yeah, like sooner than later, sooner than later. Still, that doesn't I don't know what that means, Kyle. Does that mean week one or does that mean week 10 or does that mean next year? I mean, because you're the one that said we're not even we don't even know if we're gonna be alive next week, and that's true. So I don't understand your perception of time and space. Maybe, maybe maybe he's living in uh, maybe maybe there's multiple uh, realities in, in his in his world, so. like like the yeah yeah. And in those realities, he won the Super Bowl twice. I'm sorry, SG Sports Talk Channel. What's up, Shardall says, hey Zach, are you gonna do Niner Chatter today? No, I've got a show with Sunil tonight, so not no Niner Chatter today. That'll probably come up this weekend. Sunil's responsible for my really uh, popular new new writer on my channel, uh, Daniel Kelly, the Scout. Sunil's like, hey, check out this guy. He's great. You're going to love him. I'm like, great. I, I totally trust you, Sunil. Boom. And I like the guys. I mean, he's cool. He's really, he's not a Niner fan. He really, really, really wants to piss off Niner fans and he's doing a great job so far. But Sunil, thanks, man. Appreciate that. You didn't tell oh, me yeah. at all what I was in store for, but hey, it's been fun so far. Scotty <laughs> says, Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, or another quarterback were to get hurt in training camp preseason. What type of trade packages does Jimmy merit at that point? I mean, that's, that's a whole different dimension that, that Kyle's probably living in right now. Yeah, that's that's exactly what they want, right? That that takes you into the Sam, you know, if the Forty are playing in this Sam Bradford uh, world, then they're going to trade Jimmy Garoppolo for a first round draft pick before the season starts, because <laughs> that's what the, that's what that's what that's what the Eagles got, right? When they right. went for, for Bradford was a first. I mean, can you like imagine? That. Yeah, <laughs> they can hope and wish. I, I think what the best they can hope for is a conditional third that might become a second if he's just phenomenal. That's yeah, probably something. what they're hoping for at this point. Some, something in that ballpark would make sense. Yeah, I mean, they could I mean, probably even take less, right? Jamaican boy says if Jimmy stays as a backup, they won't. Trey won't be allowed to make mistakes and learn from them. If he loses three games, the team campaign for Jimmy again can't stay. I mean, I think there's something to that. Like Jimmy did start two and four this year, but Jimmy's been to two NFC Championship games. I mean, there's a level of trust with Jimmy. Uh, Trey, who knows? I mean, Trey, because Jimmy, well, Jimmy started his career sixteen and two, or whatever, sixteen and three. I mean, there's something to that. He had this aura. What if Trey starts his career two and five? And then and he's right there just smiling. Like stand on the sidelines with a big smile. You want to win? Yeah, I, you wanna win? I can't explain it, but we win when I play. I'm just saying, I think there's something to what he says. That's yeah, I, I think oh sorry, I interrupted you. Oh no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, I think it's a very I think it's kind of a, the same situation that we had all last year with Jimmy Gar- with Jimmy Garoppolo, right? When the team was three and five or three and six, whatever they were, it was all about why isn't Trey Lance playing? Why isn't Trey Lance playing? I think it's just the opposite. The other way Not in the locker room, though. The I locker room is pretty stef- steadfast on that, except for maybe Brandon Ayuk. Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know. That. I don't know that first fact. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for me. Yeah, well, it seems like there's some other guys in the locker room that really like him. I mean, Fred Warner came out and talked about how good he was doing before without even being prompted. And Well, he hasn't lost two games yet. I'm just saying. <laughs> if he starts the season 4-0, oh, he'll be everyone's best friend. I guarantee that. Gabriel Lopez says, hey, Grant, how happy are you that the Niners are in this situation right now with Jimmy? LOL, tell us the truth. I mean, honestly, I'm not that happy because I was counting on the Niners to do like a bunch of stuff in free agency. And I thought every big move would just be like, you know, a 50 to 75,000 view video. But they did freaking one thing and I'm waiting for more. I would have liked a bigger free agency. I'm just saying last year was that trade for Trey Lance was just a a hittage gold mine and the Niners are just like, you know what? We're not going to give media people anything to talk about this year. You just talk about Jimmy Moore. Like, no, <laughs> it's, no! All the, it's the yeah. same talking point. It's just reversed. Now we're all, we're all yelling. Now we're yelling for, for, we're still yelling for Trey going into year two.